Sorry for letting you wait. Welcome back to track four. Um, next up on stage already are Marcel and Santiago. Um, they will enlighten us and take us to the world of aircraft and uh, aviation. If you've looked recently to Airport Zurich, it has been quite some lines and uh, logistical mishaps, and I hope none of you have ever missed a flight. And the two guys on stage, they will tell us how computer vision can help to detect delays, hopefully prevent them, optimize them, and I'm really looking forward to never ever missing a flight again. <laughs> Thank you. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice challenge. Uh, so we will present in really quickly, uh, we have only 10 minutes, uh, we present our project Deep Turnaround, which is a project it tells you about deep uh, from deep learning and turnaround from the turnaround or the flight preparation process that we did at Amsterdam Airport uh, in order to optimize these, this process. Just maybe not everyone has ever been in Amsterdam Airport. Amsterdam Airport is called Schiphol and it's quite a big one. Uh, it has 52.5 million passengers and this is in 2022. From, uh, and in uh, 2019 it was even uh, around 70 million. Um, 313 d destinations, a lot of uh, different airlines, a lot of movements, uh, so it's around 1,000 per day, uh, so you can imagine. Uh, and we have only six runways, so all these movements need to go through these six runways. Uh, so that you can imagine that's quite an operational challenge to get everything all, all, all right. So just to, to, uh, to, uh, to briefly summarize, what challenges do you have at an airport? You have, of course, delayed flights, eh, happens, yeah, we, we all have experienced it, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, where, uh, where does this delay come from? We have uh, runway capacity is, of course, uh, a very important, uh, uh, f uh, very cap uh, capacity uh, demand. Uh, it's very, the capacity is limited uh, a, a lot there. Uh, also ramps, uh, uh, we have uh, also a, a limited amount of ramps. And of course, Schiphol doesn't do everything by itself. It basically instructs or facilitates airlines to do their jobs. So the only thing that we can do is enhance the collaboration between these parties. So now, why did, why did we start this project? So at some point we made this graph. Uh, and it shows you the inbound punctuality, so that is the punctuality at which the aircraft arrive at Schiphol, and on below there, there is the outbound punctuality, so that's how they leave the airport. And you can see there's something going on there. And this is, uh, there's, there's something going wrong, and, and we, we had no clue what was actually going on. Something was happening on the ground, but we didn't want to know what. So, as Marcel was saying, we have a lot of information at the beginning and at the end of the flight. However, in the most critical aspect of uh, flight preparation, we, had, we were virtually blind. The whole turnaround process was a black box. Uh, the answer of Schiphol, uh, from Schiphol to solve this problem is like, okay, let's use uh, computer vision and deep learning to uh, open such black box. Because, of course, as you know, if you cannot measure something, you cannot control it, and you cannot improve it. The setup is very simple. We just place two cameras per ramp to have a, a, a complete view of the aircraft. And we, in real uh, we ingest those, uh, those images, pass through the deep learning algorithm, and uh, we uh, generate real-time detections. So let's see the algorithm in action. So for example, I would like you to pay attention to this bar and this bar. This bar uh, will represent or we, uh, when the catering truck ar arrives. And it's just waiting there for having approval to start the processes, its process. And you can see that, for example, we detect also when it's in position. And like that, we uh, can detect more, more than 60, uh, 66 uh, different tasks. Um, so um, from the computer vision and deep learning point of view or for any kind of different uh, for, for any uh, machine learning project. I think that one of the main challenges is uh, richer generalization. So in our case, we heavily invest on data-centric AI. It means that we will take care of our data and the model will uh, follow. Um, model performance will follow. Um, and not only that, but for example, uh, we want to uh, also understand 
model detections. And why is that? Because when the model is misdetecting something, we want to try to understand uh, if it's a spurious correlation with another machine and so on. So model exp uh, prediction explainability is very important to us to know exactly uh, how to improve the model uh, uh, when it's uh, mispredi uh, doing mispredictions. Also, uh, we have quite a lot of data. As Marcel was explaining, we are, uh, we are a big airport, and we have all kind of weather conditions also in the Netherlands, mostly raining for the people who are <laughs> living there, who has who visited. But uh, uh, so we really try to uh, have as much a diverse, uh, as much uh, yeah, diverse data as possible, like different type of aircraft, different um, uh, camera uh, positions, and so on. Uh, to uh, to teach the model to uh, uh, learn from many different scenarios and therefore try to guarantee, uh, guarantee uh, good model generalization. And also we uh, include all layers. So you can see here that uh, a ramp has been renov re renovated. Um, we actively put this kind of data uh, in the training set with the aim of uh, that the model will perform well even in rare scenarios. Now. That sounds very good and uh, and, um, and fancy and so on, but yeah, okay, you have very good detections. Now, what to do with that? Uh, how we can actually reduce the lace? And for that, I would like to invite uh, again Marcel to explain. Yes, so, uh, well, we, we initially had this data as a, ser as a service uh, proposition with our tool. So we thought like, oh, we have this data, we can know, uh, we can analyze it and stuff like that. And th the organization will find out its way how to deal with it. Well, that's not the case, of course. Uh, so now we, we came up with a couple of use cases and uh, we plot, you can basically plot them on a time axis. So you can look back, uh, look back how did yesterday pro uh, proceed, what were the big problems that we uh, had yesterday. You can also look at the turnaround Right now, you can have an overview of all of, the, of all the ramps that we have for cameras and, and get immediately an overview of which turnarounds are doing what. And of course, we also need to know which pr uh, turnarounds are going to be problematic. So we need to be able to, pre to, be able to pre uh, become predictive. And what, one of the things that we uh, if, uh, are most, uh, the, the product that the people are the most happy about is what we call uh, predicted end ground handling time. Um, and what we basically have is uh, we, we predict for each turnaround that you can see over here, we predict the end time, and we can show, for instance, hey, there's going to be a delay with this turnaround. And why is this important? Well, it's very important for uh, air traffic control. I, I already mentioned this uh, runway capacity, which is very uh, limited at Schiphol. Uh, runway capacity makes a planning every uh, quarter of an hour to, uh, to, to, to plan all the, the flights. And sometimes it happens that a plane is scheduled for departure, but it's not ready yet because the turnaround was not uh, ready. And the handler might have said, oh, I was, I was going to be finished over here, but we can already see it's go not going to be finished over there. So helping, um, helping the handlers to, to, uh, to get better uh, estimations for their end times will help uh, having less expired runway slots. And since this is so, yeah, so such an, uh, an important asset, the runway, you need to be able to be able uh, always to, to uh, utilize it maximally. Well, we use camera data. Camera data is quite generic. So what we are also doing is we're also helping other airports to also uh, implement it at their uh, uh, locations as well. So. As we speak, we already are serving it at uh, uh, one uh, airport, uh, which is also in the Netherlands, at Eindhoven. It's running there with the same model. Uh, we, didn't re uh, we, we do now some bit of, bit of fine tuning, but we have uh, been starting with the same model. And uh, we are also in talks in having other airports as well. So that's it. And uh, see you at the Xebia stand if you want to know more. Th there's probably no qu time for questions anymore. There is, there is. I think there's one minute Thank for you. questions. Ah. Thanks. Is there a question? Microphone? So we have a one minute question microphone session. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, maybe a question about the video. How are you using only like video of the aircraft or are you using some video from 
the other place of the airport because we, we can imagine that if there is a problem on the ramp, maybe a bird thing or something, you can have like an impact of all the all the aircraft because they're going to need to wait. So. Uh so you, you, your question is whether we are using more than just these two cameras uh, in order, for instance, to see if a luggage uh, vehicle is getting held up somewhere else. Uh, we are not doing that yet, uh, but we are thinking of ahead of that, of course, in the future. Uh, one of the other things is that we want to have passenger counts as well. A lot of gates are uh, connected at Schiphol with, uh, with a bridge, so you don't see passengers walking over the apron. Uh, so we, and these are of course very important signals to 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 have. So we're also think, thinking of expanding, uh, basically adding more sensors. Sensors or cameras? Yeah, so c camera as as being a sensor. Yeah. 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 Then you have a GDPR topic again, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more questions. Yeah. <laughs> Follow up. Great. Um, yeah, another question: Do you see like an impact of the company? Because maybe we can imagine that low uh, low cost company are maybe parked in a other place of the airport, and so maybe it take longer for them just to bring the passenger or yeah, so you mean have we analyzed which airlines have, are doing better than other airlines yeah so we we have one slide that we skipped from this presentation, <laughs> and that one slide is about uh, how to properly uh, organize the collaboration between airport as being a facilitator for different airlines and uh, and yeah so we we at the moment we are very uh, sensitive about how to use this data so we don't want to report this airline is doing well this airline is not doing well yeah is your project already in a stage where you would go and sell it to another airport or we already did it okay and we're actually uh, receiving money for it <laughs> <Yeah>. even better <laughs> even better so two airports yeah. two airports yes. all right yeah. so this is a very short Q&A, so one more round of applause for, for your presentation. <laughs> and then...